Hi, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware, and this little fella is the Zotac Z-Box. It's a new Intel dual-core Atom-based nettop from Zotac that also happens to be infused with NVIDIA's next-generation Ion graphics processor for netbooks and nettops. This adds a significant amount of additional multimedia horsepower under its hood for what would otherwise be a very low-power, low-profile, small-form factor system for things like a home theater PC or perhaps a bit of bedroom or kitchen computing. We're going to show you what it's made of, we're going to show you how to configure one from a bare bones solution from Zotac, and then we'll show you how it performs. Stay with us. So we're looking at the Z-Box model HD-ID11. It measures 7.4 inches square by 1.73 inches thick. And as you can see, it's highly stylized, uh, sort of piano black mirrored finish here. Attracts fingerprints, by the way, so keep the microfiber cloth ready for wiping down when needed. But a nice illuminated circle on the side here, uh, sort of signature of Zotac's brand of net top products. With the system comes a Visa mount plate that allows you to mount the system to the back of a TV or monitor, a driver CD, owner's manual and warranty card. What you're not seeing here is the AC adapter, the power brick that actually is running the system right now. It's a small power brick that also tucks out of the way easily. This model is based on an Intel Atom D510 dual core processor clocked at 1.66 gigahertz and an Intel NM10 Express chipset. From that chipset, off of PCI Express by one lane, hangs an NVIDIA ION graphics processor with an additional 512 meg of DDR3 graphics memory. On the front edge of the system is a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a 6-in-1 flash card reader, a USB port, Wi-Fi indicator light, hard drive indicator light, and a power button. And on the top edge is a USB port that's covered with a rubber cover. And on the back edge of the system is where the power plugs in. We've also got an optical audio output port, HDMI output, DVI output, four more USB ports, gigabit ethernet, and an eSATA port. Also, you can see here is some venting on the side of the case for the heatsink and fan assembly that's inside, and we'll take a look at that next. So getting inside the Z-Box HD-ID11 couldn't be any easier. We've got it resting here comfortably on top of our microfiber cloth. Again, taking care of that piano black finish on the outside. And uh, you just pull these two thumb screws and you are now allowed to pop and slide this cover right off. And as you can see, you're exposed to all of the internal components of the system. Now the Z-Box HD-ID11 is what's called a bare bones system. It does not come configured with a hard drive or system memory. We've actually populated it with a Seagate 5400 RPM, 500 gig uh, SATA hard drive, notebook style hard drive. And uh, as you can see, it just slides in underneath that bracket very easily snaps into its SATA power and data connector and you just put a thumb screw on and, and now you've installed your hard drive. Over here, we'll spin this around, is the system memory and this is a 2 gig DDR2-800 SODIMM, again, notebook components and as you can see this pops in and out real simple. This is a 2 gig DDR2-800 rated system memory, uh, so dim, small outline dim. And here is that heat sink and fan assembly that is cooling the graphics core, uh, the Ion GPU and the Atom processor, both under one heat sink and fan assembly. And then again, exhausting out through the side of the chassis, uh, through the vents on the side of it. And as you can see, all of your IO components are here. So pretty straightforward design, and all you need to do to configure your own Z-Box is to purchase a two and a half inch notebook hard drive. We've got a 500 gig, 5400 RPM Seagate drive there, and some SODIMM notebook memory, DDR2 specifically. Uh, we chose DDR2-800. So our system is built and we're ready to run it. So we'll demo it for you next. Okay, so here we are with the Z-Box and we're driving the signal out to a 50 inch plasma television over HDMI. We're set up with Windows 7 here with a uh, desktop resolution of 1920 by 1080. So full 1080p HD desktop. And as you can see, we've got a Windows Media High Definition Digital Video Clip fired up here. It's called Speed and it's a 1080p HD video clip. Let's put it full screen and show you what the Z-Box is capable of. So as you can see, even in this fast moving clip, no drop frames, things are looking pretty smooth. 
and we'll show you a uh, high definition QuickTime clip next. And here we fired up some 1080p resolution H.264 encoded QuickTime MOV movie clips. This is actually the uh, Iron Man 2 trailer from the Apple website, but we fired it up here in Windows Media Player because QuickTime actually was a little bit choppy. Uh, obviously there's some optimizations going on still with NVIDIA drivers and various media players, but in Windows Media Player and with this content, as you'll see, things are quite fluid and smooth. And we're actually pushing Dolby Pro Logic THX quality sound over our HDMI cable through our receiver in our home theater test center here. And as you can see, we're actually pushing about 10, 15%, 20% sort of oscillating CPU utilization here in Windows Task Manager Performance Monitor. We've actually got four threads. And again, performance is quite good. For H.264 encoded media on the Z-Box, driven by the next generation Ion graphics chip by NVIDIA, pushing the pixels. So here we fired up Enemy Territory Quake Wars, and uh, this is a first-person shooter, OpenGL-based game by id Software. And as you can see, we're running the Z-Box pretty smooth at uh, 1280 by 720p resolution. Uh, medium image quality, no anti-aliasing enabled. And we're pushing about 28, 29 frames per second, so it's actually playable. And so the Z-Box with next generation Ion under the hood does have a bit of gaming capability. It would say low end to light duty, uh, mid-range at best gaming capability on the Zotac Z-Box. Okay, so when we first sneak peeked the Z-Box at Hot Hardware, some of you wrote in and said you wanted to see what the performance of the system would be like running a Windows Media Center interface. And so we went ahead and installed a USB RF wireless remote transmitter and Windows Media Center remote right here. And through the comfort of our remote, I can uh, run the Windows Media Center interface as you'll see quite easily. It's actually very responsive. Let's fire up some music real quick. We'll do a little bit of light multitasking. We'll listen to music while we look at some stock pictures that are on the machine. As you can see, again, the interface, very responsive. Mr. Koala here loads right up, pretty snappy. And we can even go back and play some sample HD video that comes with Windows 7. Pull that up for you. Again, the, the interface for Windows Media Center, perfectly fluid and smooth. About as fast as I've ever seen it run. No problems there. We will say that flash video currently on the Z-Box is uh, in development, or I should say driver development uh, with NVIDIA. Uh, and so right now flash video is a little bit choppy on the Z-Box. Um, and there is a new driver drop coming from NVIDIA that will improve that and make that also as fluid as you're seeing here with this uh, Windows Media clip. But that's the Windows Media Center interface on the Z-Box. As you can see, no problems here running that at all. The Z-Box model that we tested retails for $259.99. Although remember, it's a bare bones solution. You'll need to purchase your own two and a half inch SATA notebook style hard drive and DDR2 system memory, again, SODIMM notebook style components to configure a full system. Stop by hothardware.com for a full detailed review with benchmarks. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by.